Welcome to Unreal Gems. In this video, by popular demand, we are going to learn how to make flow maps, which are related to getting the anisotropy effect in Unreal Engine. Okay, so we are going to start in GIMP because first we need to create the texture brush. So let's create a new document and we are going to make it 16 by 16 pixels. Click OK. And next, we will just paint it with a color. So it's quite easy. Bucket tool, select the color. It needs to be a certain value because of substance. So click on the 0 to 255 and then input 128 in the red channel. Next, we are going for the green channel, which is going to be 255. And next, 128 in the blue channel. This is going to be equivalent to up in the DirectX convention. So that's the logic behind those values. And now with the paint bucket tool, just click on the background and it will fill it up for you. And next, we just need to export this brush. So we are going to use PNG and it's as simple as selecting export as using the PNG extension, giving it a name, selecting where you want to save it and clicking on export. Once we are ready, you are going to see I have default settings and once we are ready, it is going to be exported in the folder that we just mentioned before and we can go to substance and start the process of painting the flow maps. Okay, so in Substance, I just have imported the hair mesh with some textures because I want to be able to see where the strands of hair are going, where the locks of hair are pointing. So we can select the normal plus height plus mesh so we can see the channel that we are painting plus the mesh details so we can paint on top and we are going to see everything. As you can see, I have a base layer, which is the fill layer with everything. If you don't have a normal channel in the texture set, go ahead and create it because you are going to need it. We are going to use it as a base for the anisotropy channel. You can press plus and look for the normal channel. Since I already have created it, you are not going to be able to see it. But if you wouldn't have one, select it in that list and create it. Okay, so now that everything is ready, we can go back to layers and we can start creating the layers that we are going to need for our flow map. Okay, so the first thing that we are going to need is a base color, which is going to be a fill layer. It is going to be empty and it will only have a neutral color in the DirectX normal map. So after clicking the bucket and creating the fill layer, you can now see its contents selecting normal. As you can see, it is empty. So nothing here. We can now go ahead and check the color just in case your default color is not the same. So as you can see, we have 128, 128 and 255. That's pretty much it. So now we are ready to start painting or Maybe not, because first we are going to draw some arrows so we can see later in the UV map the direction of the locks of hair easily. So let's set up the paint layer with the brush button. And we are already going to set it up as if we were going to paint the flow map, because why not? We are already going to see some subtleties and we will be able to see how it works. Okay, so first things first, we need to check follow path. So it's going to be on. Next, we will keep the alignment and other settings default. And when we get to the last settings, so the channels, we are going to turn everything off. But the normal channel, 
and here we are going to need to import our brush and select it so we can use it. So for that, we are going to go to the file menu and there we are going to use the import menu to import the texture. So add resources, select the folder and the texture. In my case, I saved it to downloads, select the texture setting in the type of asset and then choose current session and click import. You will have the texture brush on the libraries. You can drag and drop to the normal channel and there you have it. We are ready to paint. So now you can see that the direction in which I am painting influences the final color, which is going to be the angle, as we saw before, of the strands of hair. Let's make our brush smaller now because we are going to start to paint some arrows. So we have references to paint on the UV map later. So I'm just going to fast forward through the process because it is quite long and quite tedious. But the premise is simple. You just need to paint in the direction of the hair strands. And that's it. As you can see here, I'm painting arrows in that direction. Do not worry too much about the quality right now because this is just for reference and nothing else. So you can paint however you want. As I mentioned before, let's speed it up because it takes a while. Okay, so now we are going to rename the layers because we already have a couple and if not, we won't know what is what. So let's name base layer as the base layer, so the neutral color layer and the arrow layer as arrow layer. And now we know where everything is with no problems. Let's create another paint layer and this is going to be the flow map layer, so let's name it flow map. Now let's make sure that every setting is OK and correct. Follow path on. And remember, it needs to be more or less the same. You can turn it on and off, the arrow layer, I mean. And as I mentioned before, we need to make sure that everything is OK, looks OK, same brush. And we can change some settings in the hardness, for example, or the size or the spacing to get a smoother transition but if you don't have a drawing tablet like me and you use your mouse it's going to be difficult i'm going to go with the spacing to the minimum and i'm just trying to get a smoother result but as i mentioned before it's going to be tough because every little mouse movement is going to make the direction change and the flow map change color I prefer painting on the UVs, that is why I drew the arrows, because now you can easily see what is what in the UV map. So as you can see, if you get closer, you do not know the real direction, but with the arrows it's real easy. Now we start painting in the direction of the arrows, and that is going to be pretty much it. You need to try to keep the direction of the hair strands, and that's that. Remember to turn off the arrow layer if you want to see the final result because it can be tricky if you see the arrows. Sometimes you may think that you have some errors and that's pretty much it. You just need to paint and sometimes it's going to be difficult because not always is it working properly. Like for example, when you press Ctrl C, you can see that it had some problems there and we need to repaint again. That is kind of a pain but it is what it is and try to keep it smooth try to keep the brush size as big as you can but without overflowing to other parts of the hair in terms of uh, painting i cannot tell you 
much more because I am a programmer. So I mean, art is not my forte. So I'm just doing my best, as you can see. But just bear in mind that I am no substance painter expert. So we need to keep on going and painting everything in the direction of the arrows, like here, trying not to overflow to other UV shells, deactivating the arrow layer just to check that everything is okay. And it is a matter of just keep going and trying to get the directions right and the colors right, the angles right. If you need to go to small places, just turn down the size of the brush so you overflow as less as possible and keep on going. You can also, if you prefer it, paint on the mesh instead of the UV map, but in my opinion, you can be more precise in the UV map instead of the mesh, but it's a matter of taste. But as I mentioned before, I prefer painting on the UV map with the arrows. And by the way, if you cannot see the UV map, just choose 3D 2D in the viewport options and you will see both. So you can use the same workflow that I am using. And with that, we will keep on going. I will probably speed this process up because it takes a while. As you can see, it is quite a slow process. And if you are precise, you will get better results. So we cannot rush it here. Always double check your work with and without the arrows so you can see properly what you are doing. Okay, so this is the almost final result. If you are better in substance painter, you will get probably better results than me, but it is what it is. And right now I consider it acceptable and we can later improve it with some filters. As you can see, I maybe missed some parts or not. No, they are painted. As I mentioned before, sometimes it is difficult to see if they are done or not, but you can see that we are almost there. I'm missing some small parts, but as I mentioned before, these are small touches and I am pretty much done. It is important to mention that if you have clearly visible UV seams with changes in orientation really close together, that is going to cause problems in Unreal Engine and you may see the seams when you activate the anisotropy parameter in Unreal Engine. So just bear that in mind, you need to be really careful with the UV orientation because if not, you are going to have trouble with your anisotropy materials. Okay, so the last step can be just checking in the 3D viewport if everything is looking right. And if not, you can give it the final touches and paint whatever you feel is not right. It is sometimes difficult to tell if it's wrong or not especially with a mouse because small changes in direction derive in big changes in color as you can see but sometimes they are quite obvious when you are done remember to turn off the arrow layer do not forget that and we are almost ready to export our textures okay since you can see that the result is not perfect because of painting with a mouse and not being an expert, we need to do something about these problems. So for that, we are going to use a blurring filter. You can choose add filter in the magic wand and unselect all of the channels that are not the normal channel and then select the filter, which is going to be blur. We are going to look for it, just type blur and that's pretty much it selected. And now we can adjust the blur intensity and it will 
Blur de Texture More or Less. The higher we go, the less detail that the texture will have, and the lower we go, the closer to the original that it will be. I'm going to use it to get rid of some of the noise, but bear in mind that you can filter colors to other UV aisles and so on and so forth. So be careful with this because if you go too overboard, you can have problems. So once we are done, we just need to export the texture, which is quite easy. You can go to File and then select Export Textures. And in that menu, we are going to select the output template for Unreal Engine 4, file type PNG, 8-bit, and next we can go to the other textures and deactivate them because we are only interested in the normal texture, which in this case is not a normal map, but a flow map. Click on export and then we can go to the file explorer and we will see our texture which we can rename because, as I mentioned before, it is not a normal map. Do not worry if you see some blue filtering into the texture because it is normal. Remember that the UVs sometimes do not cover the whole texture, so those spots missing inherit the blue neutral color from the base fill layer. So do not worry about that. And with this, we are done. Right now, we can now go to Unreal Engine and use the material that we have created in the PBR series to get results like this in Unreal Engine. Well, so that's it for this video. As you can see, the process is quite complex and time consuming, but I hope that with these tips and tricks, it is easier for you. Remember, if this video has been helpful, go ahead, like and subscribe, and we'll see each other in the next videos. Huge shout out and thanks to all my Patreons. As you know, making these videos takes a ton of time and effort because I research in depth all of the topics that I cover. So if you want me to keep making awesome stuff, consider supporting me on Patreon.